hello my beautiful people welcome to yet another beautiful and exciting episode of my youtube channel and our video for today i'll be telling people where i'm from and a couple of things about my country so one of the things that prompted me to make this video gosh is because when i talk with people and i get to hear the kind of things they tell me about my country i'll be like how can you be spilling so much ignorance and yet you're so confident about it also some get to when i express myself in english some of them are like how come you speak english most people i've seen from your country they don't understand any word in english talk less of speaking it duh that's because i'm from a bilingual country just like uh canada that speak english and french so do we in my country i haven't said that my people yeah i'm from cameroon yes cameroon is a bilingual country we speak english and french those are the official languages we have in cameroon and don't get it twisted that doesn't mean those are the only two languages we speak in cameroon no over 283 local languages spoken in cameroon cameroon is a country situated between west africa and Central Africa. That's what said. Part of it is situated in West Africa, but it's situated in Central Africa. But Cameroon chose to uh, belong to Central Africa uh, organizations like the CEMAC. So um, Cameroon has its capital in Yaoundé. It has a population of about 26 million there, about. And Cameroon's land surface, Cameroon should be slightly smaller than than Spain. Cameroon is known as the Republic of Cameroon and uh, Cameroon has some countries that it does share, uh, that it share borders with. And for those ones, permit me to read from the paper because I don't want to go and, and cite that uh, country. A belongs to the west whereas it belongs to the east of Cameroon. So having said that, we will go through uh, those countries that we share boundaries with. Uh, to the northwest of Cameroon, you have Nigeria. To the northeast of Cameroon, you have Chad. To the east of Cameroon, you have Central African Republic. To the southeast of Cameroon, you have the Republic of Congo. To the south of Cameroon, you have Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. And of course, uh, the southwest part of Cameroon has the Atlantic Ocean. So Cameroon too is known as uh, Africa in miniature. Cameroon is a country that is filled with lots of diversity. It has the white and the black uh, beaches, uh, sand beaches. It has the, the, the high mountain volcanoes. It has the thick uh, tropical forests filled with white animals like the, the chimpanzees, the elephants, you name it. So Cameroon mm -hmm. is ruled by President Paul Bia. <laughs> so having said that and Cameroon is a country made up of 10 regions just like some countries have states and some have uh, uh, provinces Cameroon has regions and we are made up of 10 regions eight of these regions are French speaking while uh, the two are English speaking so I'm from the English speaking part of Cameroon we are the minority yes and I'm uh, precisely from the northwest region, uh, my tribe is known as Nso. I'm from so yes, I'm a so warrior. I'm a descendant of so I'm the so warrior. And my to, uh, one thing I would like you people to know is where I'm originally from. From so the so people were founded. The kingdom was founded by a lady. So yes, known as Ngomso. And before the crisis, which I will subsequently get to that, every year uh, from my place we used to have. Um, the Ngonso festival that every year we had to pay homage to our founder which I said earlier on that is a woman so now I will take us back to history of Cameroon and evolution of certain things the autochtones of Cameroon the aborigines of Cameroon they were the Baka people or some people will call them the Bantus uh, found in the in the present uh, forest of the of the south and the eastern uh, regions of Cameroon, like the Pygmies. So a lot of us, where we are settled today, originally that is not where we were from. We had to fight wars of conquest to come and settle where we are presently. So around the late 14th to the 17th to the 16th century or so, um, there was a movement 
from the South Sahel, an Islamic movement. So this Islamic movement was led by a leader, Uthman Danfodio. It was kind of a movement of conquest. They were conquering uh, most of those states or kingdoms as they were known in those days. And those who were recalcitrant and didn't want to convert, they were killed. So that caused a lot of displaced movements. Most of us, like originally, we were settled before, like in the northern part of Cameroon. But when, with the influx of the jihads, the movement, Islamic movement, was known as the jihads. With the influx of the jihads into the northern part of Cameroon, a lot of uh, people had to move. There was a lot of migration, and as they moved. Some of them had disputes amongst themselves, like among siblings, and they had to separate to go and uh, with their own followers to go and uh, settle in different localities or locations. That was the case with uh, where I'm from. Uh, the Gonso, she had her own siblings. They had a misunderstanding in the course of migration. They had to separate, like the brother had to go and uh, settle in Fumban with its own followers, and there was another person that settled in. I think it's in the South region, like in Bansua or so, yes. So that was equally one of the same things that happened with the, the Bali. Like today we have about seven Balis. The Bali Nyonga, the Bali Kumbat, and a whole lot of the other Balis. Those were seven brothers who had misunderstandings and in the course of migration they had to separate, go on with their own followers to go and found different kingdoms which caused to us to settle in most places we are actually settled in, in today's Cameroon. Uh, about the 14th, the 16th century or so, the first Europeans to visit Cameroon were the Portuguese. And these Portuguese did not visit Cameroon with the interest, interest of conquering Cameroon. What brought them to Cameroon then was uh, trade purposes. They came for trade, especially slave trade. You know, at that era, slave, slave trade was very common. So they were trading, and when they came, they settled around the banks of Cameroon, known as the River Uri. When they settled there, uh, they discovered that uh, the river around the area they settled had so much prawns. So that like inspired them to name Cameroon Rio dos Cameros, meaning the river of prawns. Fast forward to the 18th century, when uh, uh, slave trade was gradually being abolished. And there was now a scramble for Africa by the European people to conquer African territories. Um, and that was when religion was being introduced in Africa because slave trade was abolished and religion was brought in. So in 18th century, there was a scramble for Africa. And it was shocking people to get to know that Cameroon was first a German colony. In 1884, Cameroon was conquered by Germany under the leadership of Otto von Bismarck and from 1884 until 1919 or so Cameroon was under German uh, colonial rule. After Germany was uh, defeated in World War I which uh, spanned between 1914 to 1919 there was a meeting uh, during the Versailles Treaty the European powers decided to take all German overseas territories uh, as Germany was one of the the, cause, the countries that caused the First World War. So as punishment, they decided to take all their overseas territories. Cameroon, of course, had to be taken from Germany. Britain and France said, okay, they were both interested in, in Cameroon. Now, fast forward from 1919 at the Versailles Treaty to uh, 1922 during the League of Nations, the partition of Cameroon it had to be drawn on the table. So Britain now said, okay, they had colonized Nigeria and they just wanted to use part of Cameroon to join and rule with Nigeria. But Cameroon would be ruled with Nigeria as an overseas territory. So part of uh, Cameroon was divided and given to Britain, which they ruled it as an overseas territory and it was named British Cameroon. It was divided into two. You had British Southern Cameroon and British Northern Cameroon. Then France took their own and they ruled it as French Cameroon. So fast forward to 1960, most of these countries were beginning to gain independence and French Cameroon was scheduled to have their independence on the 1st of January 1960. Later that same year, uh, Nigeria was about to have independence. So now the fate of British Cameroon was hanging. First, uh, January 1960 came, 
French Cameroon gain independence as a La Republique du Cameroon, known as the in English as the Republic of Cameroon. Later that same year, Nigeria they gained their independence. I think it, I don't know if it's October or so of the same year they gained their independence, and French Cameroon their fate was left undecided. So fast forward to 11th of February 1961 what was known as the plebiscite. A plebiscite was organized and two clauses were included. The third clause was omitted and denied because they considered us to have been so small of a population to be given the option of independence. So they brought two clauses. The first was, will you gain independence by joining French Cameroon? And the second, or will you gain independence by joining the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria? So on that day, uh, British northern cameroon voted to join nigeria yes and british southern cameroons voted to join cameroon here yeah. so all of those people who always come at me and be like cameroon was part of nigeria before no initially we were one even under german colonial rule we were one it was britain and france that came with their wahala and came and partitioned us that we are still fighting that battle until today uh, the British Southern Cameroon joined to become uh, to join their brothers of uh, the Republic of Cameroon. So, in 1962, now the name had to be changed from uh, the Republic of Cameroon to the Federal Republic of Cameroon because now they were like it had to be ruled like two federal states with equal rights. The country still remained under the, the rule of Amadou Ahijo, which was the president that uh, uh, led Cameroon to gain independence on the 1st of January 1960. So in 1972, uh, still under the, pre the leadership of Amadou Ahijo, he now changed the name again from a federal state, from the Federal Republic of Cameroon to a unitary state, the United Republic of Cameroon. Amadou Ahijo in 1982, as a result of ill health, had to resign and uh, uh, his prime minister, as of then, which is President Paul Bia, had to take over as the president. And that is how President Paul Bia has ruled us since that 1982 to date. So it means by next year, almost have ruled us for 40 years. Back to our history. So President Paul Bia came and uh, some years later, he changed the name again from the United Republic of Cameroon back to the name French Cameroon had before we joined them in 1961. So he changed the name back to the Republic of Cameroon, and that's the name that the country has had until date. So in 2016, uh, a group of lawyers and teachers, they came out on the streets to protest on some uh, discriminatory things they thought they were going through like the teachers for example were saying they don't understand how because french system of education is different from english system of education so they were like they don't understand how they'll be sending french teachers who cannot even express themselves in in english and they'll be sending them to english schools to come and teach what how can you even come to teach someone in a language you yourself cannot speak so was the case with the lawyers who were like in English, for example, they practice uh, the common law, the French, they practice a different kind of law. How can they be sending them to come and preside cases in our court? It doesn't happen like that. That was a peaceful protest which, which turned violent because when they came out, the military retaliated and some of them were shot, some were injured. That provoked anger. You know, it was like a purge anger that English Cameroonians had been keeping like keeping over them for the years so it now turned to something else a lot of people started coming out on the streets and the demand now changed they were asking for independence they said okay now we think we've matured to a stage where we can manage ourselves so we want to separate from French Cameroon and until date the issue is still there because it led now to a lot of uh, you had uh, those who were depending, uh, demanding independence and they declared uh, uh, their country, that they want to name their country Ambazonia. You had those who were like, okay, we do not want to separate, but we want uh, the country to return to a federal state as it was prior. There were a lot of demands that 
as a result of that, a lot of um, of uh, groups had to resurface and uh, fighters that they, they took upon themselves that they are going to fight and have a war of liberation. A lot of people have been killed. A lot of people have fled to neighboring countries. A lot of houses have been burned. And uh, women, children have lost their lives. Some of them have been burned. So the economy is no longer the same. It's just been, uh, I don't know how to even explain it. I don't even know how to put it. The situation is still getting worse by the day since 2016 until now. So uh, I wouldn't go further than this. Like I said, that I'm Cameroonian, but uh, I'm not based in Cameroon. I live in Istanbul, Turkey. On the exactly the 5th of April of next month will make me ADS in Turkey. <laughs> that would be it for today, my people. So have a wonderful day. Bye. And if there's any other topic you want me to talk about, do not hesitate to, if you have me on any of my social media handles, you can always contact me. If you do not have any of my social media handles, do not hesitate to drop your proposals in the comment section. Thank you.